In this video we will have a look at some of the difficult concepts on amortization, depreciation, as well as impairment under the cost and revaluation model. So stay tuned. Before we begin with the theories, let's take a look at some of the accounting terms defined by the international accounting standards. First of all we should know that tangible assets means assets held for use in the production of goods and service, example can be properties or buildings. Next we have cost, meaning the amount paid to acquire an asset. Then we have fair value, which basically refers to the price when buying or selling an asset under market conditions. And carrying amount means the value of an asset after deducting depreciation and impairment loss. Where depreciation refers to the allocation of depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. And impairment loss means the difference between the asset's carrying amount and its recoverable amount. And as we have always mentioned depreciable amount means the cost of an asset minus its residual value. And useful life means the period in which an asset can be used. And finally we have the recoverable amount meaning the higher of selling price and its value in use. There are basically two common depreciation methods, namely the straight line method and the diminishing balance method. The straight line method would give a constant amount of depreciation every year, whereas the diminishing balance method would give a constant depreciation rate. Let's look at the following example. Assume there is an asset purchased at a cost of $3,000, with a residual value of $300, and useful life of 3 years, the asset under the straight line method will depreciate by $900 every year, and the diminishing balance method will depreciate the asset by around 54% every year. In fact, double entries for both depreciation and impairment loss are very similar, because both of them would need to debit the profit and loss account and credit the balance sheet. We'll soon learn their differences in accounting treatment. If we want to record depreciation of the asset under the straight line method, we debit depreciation, which is a profit and loss account item and credit the accumulated depreciation which is a balance sheet item. Since it is a straight line method therefore we use the same amount of depreciation every year. Remember, depreciation in the profit and loss account will be the same every year, but the amount of accumulated depreciation will be carried forward to next year which means that at the end of the third year, the amount of accumulated depreciation will be 2,700 instead of 900. If we sell the asset at the end of the third year for $500, in our journal entries, we shall first debit cash by 500 because we receive 500, then we credit asset by 3,000 because the cost of the asset is 3,000, then debit the accumulated depreciation by 2,700 because we need to close the accumulated depreciation account when we sell the asset, and finally we credit the profit and loss account by 200 as an income. However, sometimes when we record depreciation of an asset we have to consider whether the asset is measured under cost model or the revaluation model. The cost model means the value of an asset is measured at cost minus depreciation and impairment, whereas the revaluation model will measure the asset with fair value. Let's have a look at an example on cost model. For simplicity let's assume there is an asset purchased at the cost of $50,000, with useful life of 10 years, and zero residual value. At the end of the fourth year by calculation the carrying amount should be $30,000, but it is found that the recoverable amount is only $24,000, since the recoverable amount is less than the carrying amount, therefore we have to debit impairment, which is a profit and loss account item by $6,000, and credit accumulated impairment loss by $6,000 in our balance sheet. Two years later, the new carrying amount will be $16,000, and it is found that the recoverable amount is $42,000. Although the recoverable amount is much higher than the carrying amount, the reversal of impairment loss cannot exceed the carrying amount in the case where no previous impairment loss had been recognized, which means that the reversal of impairment loss will be capped at 20,000 in this case. Therefore, we shall debit the accumulated impairment loss by 4,000, which is the difference between the new carrying amount and the original carrying amount, and credit gain on reversal in our profit and loss account by 4,000 as well. Now let's have a look at an example on revaluation model. On the 1st of January a building is purchased at the cost of 30,000, with useful life of 30 years and zero residual value. Five years later the building is revalued to $75,000. Since the carrying amount is 25,000, the gain on revaluation is therefore 50,000. To record this in our journal entries, we first credit the revaluation surplus, which is a balance sheet item by 50,000, then debit building by 45,000, because there is a gain from 30,000 to 75,000 in its value. 
then finally debit accumulated depreciation by 5000 because we need to clear the accumulated depreciation account after the revaluation. The new depreciation will then become 3000 each year. Three years later, however, the fair value drops to $50,000 only. By calculation the carrying amount is 66000 and difference between carrying amount and fair value is 16000 Therefore, this time we have to debit revaluation surplus by 16000 again debit the accumulated depreciation by 9000 and credit building by 25000 because its value drops from 75000 to 50000 Apart from tangible assets we shall look at the accounting treatment for intangible assets, meaning non-monetary assets without physical substance, such as trademarks or license. In fact, the accounting standards for intangible assets are quite similar to tangible assets, for example, it also permits the use of cost model and fair value model, with the initial recognition being recognized at cost, and there is also amortization, which is another description for depreciation for intangible assets, and its estimation and double entries are also very similar. So that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.